What's up, everyone? This is John Krauss. Uh, this is True Story Bro, and I wanted to bring in my guest, Caitlin Young. She's a 25-year-old young lady out of Michigan, originally born in White Lake, it says, she says. And she's an entrepreneur, and I'm looking to learn more about what she's doing for business, but more importantly, what her story is. I know we had talked before, Caitlin, and we had chatted about um, some really reasons why you're just a badass and uh, i think i told you that before and i believe that wholeheartedly and you're going to definitely inspire some people uh just by sharing your story so why don't you kick us off and tell us a little bit more about yourself kind of where you're living where you're at and we'll go from there absolutely thank you for having me on john i appreciate it oh, it's my pleasure um, thanks for being on so uh yeah so like you said um right now i live in grand rapids michigan um i am a full-time entrepreneur doing uh have my own company called the llama's morning mojo and then i also work for the mind ninja wiley mcarthur and uh we just help people get unstuck out of their minds you know and uh become their best selves so a lot of good things happening um you know i have two dogs two cats and uh my wonderful husband at home and we just have a very blessed life so that's awesome so tell me more about your businesses it sounds break down this llama's morning mojo for me yeah so that started out as a podcast no way okay uh, and so i do that uh five days a week i do a mm -hmm. quick five ten minute podcast and then i opened a merchandise store to go with it nice. so um i have that and then uh you know it kind of has just grown from there because my goal is to have <clears throat> a llama land retreat center kind of thing where people can come get llama therapy uh, reset with some mindset NLP therapy and breathwork therapy to become mm. their best selves and go back out into the world of business and crush it. Awesome. And then, um, you know, with my ninja, uh, we just really have helped a lot of people get rid of their negative emotional baggage mm -hmm. and step into their most powerful selves. Um, there's just so many different mind hacks that mm. Wiley knows and he's passing on to me and we're just helping people daily. So it's really cool. That's awesome. Is that like a coaching platform of some sort? Yes. Yeah. That's cool. So it, That's really cool. So, so obviously you've got some experience in uh, mindset and things like that. So why don't you take us back to like, you know, um, your story. So the obviously true story bro is all about having these incredible stories where people's jaws kind of drop. And I think based on what you had talked about, I think that's, uh, you know, this is a uh, very worthy uh, of, of this show. And uh, again, at the end of the day, it's all about sharing and being vulnerable, which you already were with me when you initially shared this. And I'd love for you to share, you know, with with my audience, you know, what your story is, what what kind of your upbringing was or what whatever, however it comes across, just feel free to start wherever you want. Yeah, absolutely. So it actually started when I was about six years old. Um, I had stayed at a relative's place and got bit in the eye by their dog. Mm. And um, instead of letting me talk to my mom on the phone, because, uh, you know, I wanted my mom and yeah. or, uh, you know, letting me go see my mom, they kind of kept me from my mom. And so I thought my mom didn't want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, even when uh, my mom ended up picking me up, she didn't want to scare me with how bad my eye was so she didn't mm. make a big deal of it yeah. so my childhood mind at the time was like oh you know this isn't that important obviously so I'm not that important mm. and uh it kind of just twisted that way and that was the first moment I doubted my worth and from there it just kind of spiraled right so um I started keeping <clears throat> everything myself I started lying and manipulating to get attention um I started to become everything but who I was I mm. lost who I was and um I remember you know when I was 12 I remember laying in bed my mom had just miscarried and I remember praying to God saying you know hey God take me instead you know take me and uh you know and my life and give them a kid that's worthy because mm. I didn't think I had worth um, and it just kind of kept spiraling from there. I, you know, started really overeating. I, uh, started cutting, um, around 16 years old. I, uh, attempted to end my life with pills, but my sister walked in, um, and tried to, like, she walked in and I didn't want to like 
do that in front of her. So I just hit it, you know, and so that's what stopped me then. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of just kept building, you know, yeah. and when you uh, don't know where to turn and you don't know your worth and you think you can't tell anyone, you know, yeah. um, it just kind of builds on itself. I did have one really safe place, which was my llama. Um, and you, you she, actually had a llama? Yes. Nice. Yes. Okay. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah, so awesome. my llama Midori um, would cue into when I was having a bad day and she would just put her neck on me and do soft hums and I would kind of right. just, you know, really connect to her and uh, that would get me through a lot of my rough days and I'd yeah. tell her what was going on and stuff, but it wasn't the same because I wasn't, mm. you know, releasing all that. I was just bottling it in. Mm. Um, so when about three years ago, um, I ended up deciding that was it. I was done with life mm -hmm. and uh, basically uh, came up with my plan. I wrote the letters. I uh, decided I was going to see Avengers Endgame with my family. And that was going to be my goodbye without them knowing it. And then the next day I'd kiss my husband off to work and uh, take pills and sit, lay in bed with the pets till I went. That was the plan. Um, luckily my husband caught on and, uh, knew what was going on. And, uh, so he got me into a mental institute and for on and off for six weeks, I kind of just kept checking in and checking out of there. Yeah. So it, it definitely, um, spiraled out of control very fast. <laughs> yeah, I know. It sounds like it. I mean, so, so bringing it back to like, <clears throat> as simple as, as people may, may frame things like, you know, I've got, I've got children, I've got four of them, you know, the event when you were six, you know, the fact mm -hmm. that you, you got bit by a dog and they were, the whole thing was maybe they were just trying to protect you that, that, that caused you to kind of, you know, feel that way that you weren't important right from that then and there, you know, so that, that mm -hmm. again is, it's, 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 it's very eye opening to hear mm -hmm. as, as a father, right. Um, how, a child perceives certain situations when an adult thinks that they're protecting, um, it may not always come across the way that you intend. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's little things like that, you know, that can set someone on a path, you know, and um, like looking back as an adult now, like I see, you know, certain things and like, you know, like I always had a hard time with a couple of my siblings and, yeah. um, you know, looking back, they were trying to help, but they didn't know how, you know? Right. Right. And, uh, so, you know, but as a kid, you perceive things so differently and you don't realize how things affect you until you're older and you're like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, do you think, um, you know, having, you know, a lot of people nowadays, um, go to therapists and talk to therapists, like through talk, cause it said, you mentioned, you know, your llama, was like your, your, that, that was like your therapy. I mean, essentially, I mean, you would go in for sure. and, and talk to your llama and, and that would be like your, your, your place, safe space and, uh, you know, comforting as well. It sounds like, um, do you yeah. think that, you know, if that was available to you, that, that might've helped at all? Um, so <clears throat> I think that it, unfortunately for me, cause I'm so stubborn, <laughs> um, <laughs> that it was going to take something big yeah. to change my mindset. Yeah. Um, but I know that therapy helps a lot of people. It helped yeah. me after yeah. I made that decision to live, you know, gotcha. when gotcha. I had, you know, my epiphany after six weeks mental hospital and I put myself back in there. It's mm -hmm. like, wait, this isn't how it's supposed to be. I was going to end my life. You know, why am I mm -hmm. putting myself back in? Right. And, right. You know, that mindset change and that I didn't realize what was happening. And yeah. then it clicked like, I'm still here because God has a purpose for me. Amen. You know, there's something bigger that I don't I know it. about. I love it. And even though I don't know it, I needed to find that. Mm -hmm. So it took me, you know, having that shift and working hard for a year. I spent time just getting my mental health together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that involved being on medication yeah, and being therapists and, um, you know, really just putting the pieces together and mm -hmm. uh, really just figuring out who I was again, you know, removing yeah. the mask, yeah. all the masks I had worn for so long because I just didn't know who I was anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's still mm -hmm. moments I'm 
discovering who I am. And it's interesting mm. that it took me so long to do so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's so cool. That's so cool that you mentioned, uh, you know, the plan and, and me, I'm a man of faith and, and, uh, you know, I know God's got a plan for me. I know God's got a plan for everyone. And so, so I don't know if that is what you discovered or what was it that, that got you to say, you know what, I'm putting myself back in there. Like, what was that moment, that aha moment that you, that you had? So it definitely was that, um, thought that, oh, you know, I'm putting myself back in here. Why is that? Yeah. And, you know, that come to Jesus moment where it was like, somebody has a bigger plan for me and yeah. I'm not allowed to end it, you know? Right. Like it was just that aha moment and, you know, deciding that I was worth, um, I was worth more and yeah. that I had more value to give. And so I started just doing affirmations. I did not believe because I hated myself, yeah. um, on the mirror, you know, just starting by putting, I'm beautiful, I'm strong. And I'd laugh like reading them for a while. I was like, whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. But over time they sink in and you start to believe them, That's awesome. um, no matter how silly they are. And, uh, you know, you grasp onto that and each step you, you know, like habit stack on, you get stronger and you become a uh, force to be reckoned with. Yes. So. Which, which you are definitely. I love that you, you can admit <clears throat> just like not everyone can admit that the affirmations you, you sang them and, you know, like, cause everyone can, you know, say that, yeah, I, I totally do affirmations all the time. And, but you're right. You know, most people would initially maybe feel silly, like saying it at first, you know, like, I can't believe I'm saying this to myself. But the, I, I love that you eventually started believing it. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that something you train people with today? Um, yeah, I do. When I come across to, uh, clients that, you know, have really low self-esteem and stuff, um, the first thing I say is you're going to think this is silly. You're going to laugh at it. But, you know, this is something that's going to help you. This is something that's going to help you get to that next level. Um, and then just having, you know, things like a negative emotion clear and stuff like that combined, people just soar, you know. Tell me about that. Tell me what's this negative emotion thing. Yeah. That so um, that's part of what my ninja does. And mm -hmm. um, I thought it was some weird voodoo crap. I was like, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, this is this can't be that good. You know, yeah. like this is just some kind of weird thing. Yeah. But um, finally I was convinced to do it and, um, I went through it and, um, within the two hours I had let go of all of my emotional baggage. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was more clear on my purpose than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I knew the steps I needed to take to get there. Yeah. And, uh, it was like an epiphany moment. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, that's why, like, then a couple of weeks later, I literally sent wiley a meme and i was like uh you know i'm in <laughs> you know I, cool. i'm your employee and that's, that's how cool. i became employed with them yeah. he wasn't looking for an employee but he got one anyway <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome so that's cool because like what you mentioned there is like letting go of your like obviously recognizing your negative emotions and feelings but letting them go i know a lot mm -hmm. of groups and a lot of people and, and you know a lot of things that i've been a part of you know, like situations like um, you write these negative emotions on a paper and you throw it in a fire and things like that. It's the symbolism of it all, right? That is, it, is it something like that, similar to that, that you went through, but, um, but a little bit greater, it sounds like a little bit more in depth. So <clears throat> the cool thing about what we do is we actually don't recall the events. Um, we basically remember the first time you felt a certain emotion mm -hmm. and then look at the learnings in that time and from that you're able to erase that like negative um emotion that went with the event but mm. still take the learning with it gotcha. and so it's that much more powerful because you look back and you see all these learnings but you don't see the negativity associated with it and yeah. so you're able to just take those learnings and uh bring it to help others gotcha i love that that's so powerful tell me about the what your goal is now you said you said in eventually create 
you had something, you know, that had, has to yeah. do with llamas. Let's, let's talk about that. Like, For I, sure. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So my overall goal is to create a safe haven llama retreat center. Mm. So what that'll be is a place people can come and get, you know, mindset therapy, uh, breathwork therapy, really just tools to get through life because, um, you know, life as an entrepreneur, as a, you know, stay at home mom, as a, you know, nine to five worker, you have so many stresses, right? You have so many things just attacking you, the force of average, and it's hard to get perspective on why you're doing it all, right? Like it's bigger than just, oh, I'm feeding my family. Oh, I'm doing this. There's a purpose for everything. Mm. So to give them that, you know, vision that they go home with and to rejuvenate them and have them um, set to accomplish things is um, my goal, you know? That's the center I will create in the uh, Safe Haven Llama Retreat Center. That's awesome. I love it. Now you had mentioned you have a husband and you, do you have, you said kids too? Kid, nope. Kids? Just uh, dogs. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> dogs okay. and cats. <clears throat> that's, pl- um, yeah, that's plenty. He, trust me. I've had dogs and cats or I've had cats, but I've had dogs and that's, uh, that's, that's uh, probably more work than kids. I think <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I wonder like, Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Um, they, yeah. So we have two dogs, uh, Rosie and Zola yeah. and a cat, two cats. Yeah. Uh, melody and rory and they're our life you know and um you know so yeah we enjoy life we're moving down to te- dallas in Uh-oh. august so awesome. it'll be a lot of fun i see a lot of people migrating down to texas it seems to be a uh especially the dallas frisco area you know seems like mm-hmm. a really a uh, solid place to to kind of just you're going to be around certain players and uh yes yeah aligning yourself right aligning yourself with the right people for sure for sure that's what it's about and um you know we have um i'm putting my story in a book and that'll be launching in march so that's also exciting and uh be able to help as many people as possible so that's great that's fantastic do you have a name for the book yet yes unmasking the greatness within that's great that's great and obviously it's going to be about your story and how to overcome mm-hmm. that's fantastic yep. that's fantastic so i'm going to need you to share those links and all that at some point with me so i can update this you know once it launches i'll update the podcast notes for, sure. for you yeah yeah and for how sure. can people um how can people get a hold of you what's the best way for them to kind of reach you so the best way is just going to caitlinyoung.phonesites.com mm, that's my okay. personal business card and um you know it'll have links to everything my social media um you know the mind ninja my podcast the merch store it's all in one spot great and i'll put that i'll put that in the show notes too so that's one quick link they can they can find you perfect that's that's really cool um so to wrap up what is like and i ask this of every guest what is what is your one piece of advice like what i mean who who should be listening to your story who should be contacting you to kind of, um, kind of, uh, you know, see where they can take their life. For sure. Um, so my one piece of advice is not waiting to get the help you need. Um, you know, just because your mind has taught you that you're not worthy or, you know, you think that it's not worth your time, you're wrong. You know, there is so many people out there that would help you in a heartbeat, including me, you know, we each go through different struggles and Mm -hmm. I guarantee you whatever struggle you're going through, we know someone that's been there too, and we can get you the help that you need. So if that sounds like you reach out to me, um, I'm always available for a conversation. Um, and I'm more than willing to take the time to talk to you guys because really my mission in life is to help as many people, become their elite selves by letting go of those false masks we put on. So uh, if you're wearing the masks like I have, um, reach out. I love it. I love it. I, so yeah, so I'm going to post your link in the show notes so people can reach out to you. You're cool with that through social media, yep. connect and, and have conversations and eventually buy your book and all that good stuff. And For maybe sure. and then visit your llama retreat when it's open and when you have it, right? Oh, that's, that's yeah. awesome. Well, Caitlin, I appreciate you coming on uh, the show. 
Um, your story is incredible. And I'm so proud of like where you've, it sounds like where you've started to where you're come from and where you're going, like the places you're going. I mean, it sounds like you're, uh, you're on your way and you're only 25. So you got plenty of time, kid. <laughs> yep, exactly. I appreciate it. So I'm going to, with that, again, this is again, true story, bro. Anybody else uh, has any stories they want to share, reach out to us. But this is Caitlin Young. You got to find her on social media and connect. No, no doubt about it. Thanks for joining us.